All right, we're here at Sweat Boxing Gym in Irving, Texas with the owner and the coach of Team Listo, Hector Vasquez. How are we doing today, Hector? And Mark Vasquez. <laughs> and Mark Vasquez. I'm good, I'm good. That. What's going on? How do you feel about the Cowboys? <laughs> great game, great game. Obviously, uh, we definitely need that kind of performance from Dak and uh, the rest of the crew. So, you know, we got high hopes this season, right? Yeah, I was just looking at a stat that they say in 2018, the Cowboys did like, what, uh, 17 or 20 percent of play action plays. The Rams did 36 percent last year. The Cowboys yesterday in the drive made 46 percent of play action plays. So that's pretty good. Optimistic going into the season. But I'll see how it goes when it, we all see how it goes when it's tougher teams. But I yeah, want to jump into. Uh, so we're less than 19, about 19 days away from the card. Uh, there's been some revising, some changes. Can you tell me about the updates of the of the card coming on September 28th? 28th, yeah, September 28th, you know, here at Southern Junction in Irving, Texas. Uh, we had uh, Romero Martinez pull out. He had an injury. I think he's going to fight in a different card. So um, we had um, an open spot, and then I've been having my eye on the, on, the, on this kid, which I've known him from Irving Powell, Javier Martinez. You know, he's 6-0, if I'm not mistaken, right now. So, uh, you know, definitely going to be a impactful card. We're trying to, you know, bring up this talent that we have locally. Uh, and we go, we'll see what happens and go from there. So, Javier, if I'm not mistaken, uh, he was with Golden Boy. And he does bring a lot of crowd, a lot of people. What's one of the things that you like about him? And obviously, uh, he's a little bit younger than us. Uh, what's one of the good attributes that you like about him as, as going into the card? Uh, I like his style. You know, he has a real good technical style. You know, he hits hard. He likes to bang. Uh, definitely an, an exciting uh, fighter locally. Uh, so we want definitely want to give him an opportunity to see what, uh, you know, he can bring and and see see what happens from there. So now this is going to be, uh, Lisa's going to be the co the main event for the card. So uh, what have you what have you done differently? Because I know this time you do know who's he fighting. Because the pre last previous fights, we really didn't know who he's fighting. It was iffy. Some people pulled out last minute. So now he's going to have, I, and let's be honest, he's going to have a hard task of fighting. It's probably his big first test. Besides, you know, going into opening up as a pro, but now it's going to be a big first test because he's fighting for, for a title. So how have you prepared him? Because I've seen you, obviously, I've been here. I've seen you train him, and it's been a little bit more intense. So what have you changed for well, this training camp? Well, yeah, the intensity. I mean, this is going to be at least his first fight that goes six rounds. Obviously, his opponent is good. You know, he's, th I think, 13 now because I think he fought last week and knocked the guy out last week. He literally fought last week. So the guy is a heavy hitter. You know, he's probably 13 and with two losses. So he's definitely, definitely uh, not an easy opponent. It's definitely a huge step up for Listo. But, uh, you know, it, this is part of boxing. There's different stages. You step up, see how he does. Uh, we got to be ready. You know, this guy's going to come to bang. He's strong. He's going to want to take all Listo's punches and come forward and try to knock him out. So definitely, you know, we got to raise our conditioning, be very more technical, be more alert of... Uh, his surroundings at all times throughout the fight because one punch can change at any at any second. So uh, that's what I'm trying to prepare him mentally and physically going the six rounds and, and having someone just coming forward and taking everything he got. How do you see his um, his uh, I guess his physical and mental state of mind right now going to this fight? Because I know knowing that there's a title, obviously mm -hmm. he has to perform. I'm sure he has pressure, but he hasn't shown it to us. He doesn't he doesn't seem stressed, but how? Have you prepared him for both physically and mentally going into the fight? Yeah, I mean, one thing about Listo, out of people tell me, well, what do you see and what do you think he has? First of all, I think him mentally, he's at a different level. You know, he's very uh, confident, but very focused and is eager to learn. But he doesn't let a lot of things phase him, which is ideal when it comes to a fighter. You know, technique and all that, you know, you work on it, you build it. Uh, experience, you got to, you know, it's fight by fight. You know, there's so much I can do to help him get ready for that. Um, so it's definitely very intriguing. Uh, I'm definitely in this training camp. I'm trying to make sure no matter what, because we don't know. You know, these guys aggressive. So from him being aggressive, headbutts, you know, low blows, etc. So I need to mentally and physically prepare Listo for any of that. So we try to make different scenarios if he gets cut or if he does this and that. So uh, it'll definitely be exciting and a challenge. But, you know, it's, it's part of boxing, right? Yes, and you know what? You just touched a subject that I want to tell you. There's some since that fight already has 13 fights, he already has half more than Listo. Have you? I've seen you some techniques, some little tricks. Because there are some fighters who literally will go in there try to just headbutt you or try to low blow you so the fight can end early. So is there something, some little secrets that I guess you can tell 
uh, just a brief explanation what you've told Lisa to how to prepare for situations like that because like for an example like when I obviously you know there's different levels uh, one of my coaches would, would teach me when a guy would try to pull your arm down when you when you go in and he's trying to hug you, he's pulling your arm down, he's trying to twist it or break it. He's like, there's a certain way that you can get out of it and sneak in a punch real quick. So little tricks like that do help for a fight. And those change the momentum of the fight too. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and, and th like I said, there's different ways, different ways, depending if someone tries to, you know, rush you, you know, like trying to tackle you or in, within the clinch, you know, it's it's all that within, happens within the clinch because obviously if they're going to get away with it, it's because they're inside, the referee really can't see inside. So, you know, depending on how you put your body and your head to avoid any kind of huge damage within, uh, it's definitely crucial. And uh, that's what we work on a lot. Now, Mark, let's go to Mark Vasquez. Mm -hmm. Mark, he's not a family member of yours. Many might no, be. he's not a family member of <laughs> Not that you know. <laughs> so, uh, now this is your second fight with him. Okay. Uh I've personally, I've said this to his father, and I've said this to uh, to Coach Knuckles that uh, he does look better now being with you. And I'm not just saying this just because I'm here at the gym with you, but he does look better now. Like his punches are crisp. His punches are like you can. I'm not even in there, and I can see how fast his punches are and how strong he looks. So, well, can you tell me a little bit about that going into this uh, fight for for Mark, being in your second fight with him? Yeah, like I said, Mark, you know, he's a very talented fighter, man. He has a lot of skills. He's very fast, has power, throws a lot of combinations. It's just pretty much breaking him down, understanding when to throw and how many punches, not over overdoing it at certain stages because you leave yourself exposed and just gaining that experience and that knowledge that different fights, different fighters have different styles and you beat in certain ways. Not over trying to do something because, you know, it can make you look bad or, or risk you getting hurt because you're you're trying to force the knockout or you're trying to force to win the round when there's different ways to go about it and it's just experience and knowledge and we we definitely click uh you know so you know the sky's the limit with him yeah and i guess another thing that makes it also comfortable for for you and him uh is that uh uh he's willing to learn and just like listo he's willing to learn and every single time that i see because I you know I like to observe every little details and like you would go to the corner or you need to do this and he's never like well, like he'll try it the next round or even on the mitts so that's a good aspect. Uh, what else can you tell me about the uh, about the card? It's still the same. It's this gonna be the same fighters from last 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 uh, last card, but it's just only changed just Francisco Martinez, right? Yeah, we're, uh, and then we're not gonna have the heavyweights. We might have another guy that's coming from uh, I think Arizona. You know, he has a, he's fought Victor Ortiz. We're still trying to find an opponent. So there's six right now. It's probably going to be seven uh, total bouts at the fights. But definitely the competition is going up. Uh, the tension is going up. So it's definitely exciting. Uh, hopefully everything falls perfect. And, and then we can finish the end of the year with another a big, big show. So it's Friday's media day. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Media day, yeah. Uh, we're going to go over there where our weigh are, our host, uh, Los Cabritos, Los Cavazos. Pretty much all the main fighters are going to be there, you know, talking, interviewing, whoever wants to interview. Obviously, all media that wants to attend is more than welcome. But obviously, if you definitely want to get in the fight and be media, I, we expect y'all to be there, help, uh, you know, interviewing the fighters, just, you know, throwing the fight out there. Like I said, uh, you know, Mikey and, and Team Garcia is definitely throwing a lot of fights out here. We got to make sure they keep coming back. And we can only do it with the help of everybody. You know, obviously we understand that there's a big fight with Earl Spence and Sean Porter. Uh, you know, it's unfortunate that it ha had to happen the same day. Uh, but it's part of boxing. There's nothing you can do about it. And we just got to uh, have uh, do our event. Uh, so let me just ask you real quick. Uh, but before we move forward, there's just a couple more questions I want to ask you. Uh, for tickets information. Mm -hmm. To get at you or Listo or yeah. Mark or... Come here to the gym, check it out as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. So you can buy tickets directly from your favorite fighter. You can hit them up on Facebook, Instagram, whatever. Uh, if you don't have a favorite fighter, you can definitely uh, call me. My number is on the poster. You can come to the gym directly and get your tickets here. Or you can go online at uh, TeamGarciaPromotions.com. It depends on how you want to do it. Okay. There you have it. But uh, another question I'm going to ask you just two more uh, briefly. Two more. Spence and, uh, I know, Spence and uh, Porter. How do you see it playing out? A good you've, fight. you've, and let's give a little background. You sparred against Errol Spence when he was coming up in the pros, and you were a professional. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fought a lot. Yeah, yeah. fought Errol Spence, fought Errol Spence. I've been so in training camp with Sean Porter. So you know I, both. I, I know both. Um, personally, too. Personally, uh, like I said, you know, I'm real cool with Earl. You know, have a lot of respect for each other. You know, he's very dynamic. His power is insane for that weight class with fighting with eight ounce gloves. That's why I tell people, people don't under, understand that. 
he hits so hard and he fights at 147, which they use eight on gloves. It's it's kind of crazy. Sean Porter, I've trained with a lot of fighters, Hall of Famers, Manny Pacquiao. You can name them. I've trained with them. Sean Porter is the only one I can say like, holy smokes, his training is at a different level. Like I remember we were at the Olympic trials in Colorado Springs. So I trained with him for two weeks. We were running in the morning six miles, like at six minute, six minute pace every day in the morning and then in the afternoon. It was, the training was insane. He trains in, I get, I get it. He needs to, cause you know of his style and his body size and stature that he needs to be a hundred miles an hour, uh, you know, engine. So when you fight Sean Porter, you better be in tip top shape because that boy is coming and he's coming hard. Uh, if Sean Porter can handle Earl Spence power, I think the fight's gonna be very good. It's gonna definitely go the distance. Um, Earl probably needs to be very calculated. I think he is going to be very, uh, kind of fight like he fought Mikey Garcia. Garcia. You know, more technical, more of a range because he's a taller, bigger fighter. And I think it probably goes to the decision. And if I had to pick one, I think I would pick Earl to be, uh, to win the fight. You know? Well, there you but have anything it. Can happen. <laughs> anything, yeah, anything can happen. Uh, well, there you have it. Hector Vasquez, uh, coach, trainer, um, owner of sweat boxing gym it's always a pleasure to uh, talk to you and looking forward again for this rest of the week and we have media day and then we'll follow up on that and any more information we can just put it for out for sure there. and anybody goes media day i will buy you a shot <laughs> there you have it thanks again